is Shaq does is Shaq doing this just for entertainment purposes, or is there really does he really have an issue with Dwight? Because at this point, it's like Dwight's no longer in the NBA. Dwight has ha- he Shaq has had a Hall of Fame career. Dwight's gonna be in the Hall of Fame as well. Mm. You know, they're they're polar opposites in regards to how they played the game. But it's like it feels a little bit more personal from Shaq. Yeah. Uh he is an LA fan. Yo, bad. That shit crazy. On a Saturday, welcome to the All Even Podcast. I am Mr. All Even himself, Barry Grant Jr. You can catch the show on Megaphone, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I'm all over the place, man. Catch me on Twitter, at All Even Podcast, Instagram, at All Even Podcast. I'm on TikTok as well, if you want to get on there. Um... Jimmy the super intern. What's up, my man? Chilling? Nicole on the ones and twos, the silent assassin of what I call her. What's going on? Oh, we got my man yeah, six boy. in the building. Two weeks in a row. Yeah, of course, man. Listen, you know. They're telling me not to quit my day job. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Listen, man, I had to get you back, man. You know, we had a great pod last week. Um, so, you know, plenty of more topics to discuss, obviously. Definitely. Um, you know, we got the Thanksgiving games that we Those gotta talk about. Those very very good games. Um, you know, I want you to wanna get your, your takes on that. Our my bookie pick of the week, <laughs> right? You know, mine mine went off the rails last week, obviously, and you warned yeah. me too, but I, yeah. I don't care. I'm a, I got another one. I got another one this week. You didn't pick Houston. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um I'm gonna talk about Aaron Rodgers. My guy with his uh with his thumb issue, yeah. you know, all of a sudden now he got a broken thumb, so we got to talk about that. <laughs> um, Deion Sanders getting D one looks, but there's some backlash about that. There's some they always give my man some friction, man. They yeah, always giving him pushback, but right. I love what he did at Jacksonville State, so I believe in him definitely. Uh, Jets benching Zach Wilson, and we got to yeah. talk about that. It needed to happen. Yep. Um. Dwight Howard claps back at Shaq for, for saying some comments about him playing in Taiwan. Yo, yeah, Shaq been a hater, bro. Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I, oh, wow. I, yeah, I, yeah. I like that Dwight's clapping back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Pat Bev gets suspended. Yeah, well, listen. Yeah, we got to talk about that. Um, I got a Clippers thing that we want to discuss. It's, it's uh, you know, people always get on me about dogging the Clippers. <laughs> you know, I, I, I ain't going to try to dog on them today. They nicknamed been Clip City, Chip City for a minute with, with no chips to show. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, whatever, right? Um, then we're going to talk a little baseball. Obviously, you know, you're a big Yankee fan, so we mm-hmm. got to talk about the Aaron Judge oh, watch, man. what's yeah. going on with Aaron Judge. Judge watch. Yeah. 2022. And then the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. Dummy, yeah. So, before I get into anything, obviously, uh, how was your Thanksgiving, everybody? It was great, man. Yeah. Um, didn't get to spend it with family, but I got to spend it with friends. Well, like family, so it was, it was pretty dope. Okay, so you just abandoned your family on Thanksgiving? Nah, nah, day? nah. Listen, people <laughs> got to work sometimes. Uh, I, I, we're going to do it up for Christmas. Okay, okay. But Thanksgiving, I had to take an L this year. I hear you. Jimmy, how was your Thanksgiving? No complaints. Yeah? Good time. Did you cook? I don't cook. You don't cook anything? What's wrong with you? You gotta be able to cook something. I can make a good pizza. <laughs> you mean what? Good stovetop pizza that's already yeah. frozen and you can just put it in the, the oven? No, no, cheese and everything. Oh, oh okay. okay. So, so that's something. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't do that. So props to you. I could make pe- Lunchables pizza. Facts. I'm Facts. Doing that all day. You know what I mean? Nicole, what about you? Did you cook on Thanksgiving? No. No, I'm gonna do some cooking for Christmas Eve. Nice, nice. What are you planning on cooking on, on uh, Christmas Eve? Oh, there's like this thing I saw on TikTok, this brownie thing with like some cookie butter and Nutella in it. Oh. So I'll try that out. She told me, she told me, you know, off camera that she's going to put weed in it. Mm. So <laughs> I, I definitely got to need one she'll, of those. She'll get everybody high I'm for Christmas Eve. She, she told me that. She told me that. Um, yeah, my, my, my Thanksgiving was cool, man. You know, we had, uh, we had, uh, you know, in-laws over. You know, Jasmine had her. Her uh, 
mother over, mm-hmm. sister, nice. cousin, and she, 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 she cooked her ass off. Man. Well, I'm about to lie. find out because I was collecting yeah, places like that. You know, I was collecting tail, rings, so stupies. definitely got to get one from you. Yeah, I had a nice Jamaican Thanksgiving. <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was nice. All right, you know? I didn't have to go anywhere for that. <laughs> Stay in the house. You know what I mean? So uh, I was, I was very, very uh, happy and. She she got a, a a ten out of ten. I ain't gonna lie, nice. ten out of ten. You know, I, I helped too. You know, I did help. Standing cl- in the corner directing traffic. No, 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 no. I clean the house. No. Okay. Yeah, that's important. I clean the house, and I ask questions. Hey, what do you need from me? <laughs> See, this is how you know that a you're like a supportive man. man. Supportive what man. do you need from me? Right? I'm just gonna sit there and do nothing. Right? Because you, you can go. get you can you can get some some looks if yeah. you're just there. Right? Saying that you're taking care of the kid. No, no, no. I gotta make sure I'm involved. Right? I do that. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, I'm glad that everybody's Thanksgiving uh, was good. And um, did you hear about the this whole AMA backlash with uh, the, the Michael Jackson tribute? Yeah, I didn't really like that. I didn't like how they handled that at all. I think that's not cool at all. It's foul. That's very foul. Like, um, my thing is, my thing is, right, when they brokered the idea... Nobody, no nobody said, said nothing. Yeah, but then you want to cancel it and it's a not day like Chris before. Got in trouble or did anything? Yeah. Or tweeted anything? Like had something happen, I would understand. But to just pull the plug, just cause, and then to come out with that explanation, right? Like that's just like a slap in the face. At the end of the day, like I, I think that they did it because of the whole MJ documentary that came out, the whole scandal. Like it's like okay, that people think that he's whatever, right? At the end of the day, bro, this man's a this man's probably the greatest yeah. performer to ever walk the planet. I mean, he's passed away for a while. Sometimes yeah. they highlight those things. But also, what was the point of the rehearsals and the announcement right. of you even doing it if this is how you feel? And that's what I'm saying. Like somebody up the chain had to approve it yeah. to begin with. You feel what I'm saying? So for it to get to that point where you're canceling it a day before. It's garbage. Yeah, for real. It's complete garbage. And they called him a serial domestic abuser. I think they're confusing him with Trey songs. Bro. <laughs> just I don't I don't nuts, know. Nuts, bro, nuts. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, and I ain't gonna lie to you too. Um Nicole was right. About about the whole Twitter thing. Oh yeah. She was right. Yo, Elon Musk got Twitter. Yeah, in shambles. It's, it's in shambles, bro. It's crazy. Uh, I haven't started. I, I started feeling the effects. I haven't gotten to me yet. Yeah, but I, I can see. Well, you got to understand. Once the corporations and the advertisers dip, it's not going to be what it once was. Bro, everybody got blue check. Yeah, and and you see what they're doing. Yeah, uh, they're they're tanking some economies. They, right. they put out they, the they've the manipulated insulin. the stock market because yeah. they're they're impersonating other people yep. with blue checks, tweeting things, and then it's affecting the market. Like, yeah. How did he not know that this was not going to happen? That's supposed to be a genius. And, and I mean, part of the blue checks was the exclusivity. Right. Of they actually verified you that or who I you I know were. that this person is legit and yeah. real. I cannot, you know, I cannot duplicate your page because I don't have a blue check. Exactly. So I don't know how that's going to work because when Twitter first came about, I only found out about it because it was just like a switch hit. Yeah. And every news outlet and TV channel, everything was tweeting, 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 tweeting. So to have those people drop out of the race, I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, you pay $44 billion for something and then just to set it on fire, like that's a $44 billion bonfire. That's crazy. So um, hopefully it comes to his senses or I, I don't know what's going on. Because Twitter, I mean, I don't use it as much. Like I said, it doesn't affect me as much. I've right. seen some of the effects. But, like, it's a big platform. And, yeah. and we've really gotten used to used to it. So you think you think something else will rise up over Twitter? It's There's always going to be something new, but everything had its use case. Yeah. Facebook is still... There, even if it's not just for the passwords in the groups, Instagram for the pictures, uh, Twitter just to get your your 140 characters right. off, TikTok for whatever the new dance craze. Everything has Snapchat for illicit. illicit yeah, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so everything has its use. So I don't know if when Twitter goes away, like, oh. are we ever gonna have a medium like that again? So I'm really hoping they don't mess that up. Yeah, no, I, 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 I hear you, man. I, I'm just disappointed because, you know, 
you spent forty four billion dollars to buy it. Yeah, you fire everybody. And he's you, trying to get him back because he messed up. You can't fire everybody at a place because they because they they're are the ones, Twitter. They, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they're the ones that made it forty four billion dollars in regards to an evaluation. Exactly. They they're the face of it, right? Like they are the creators and they put up the content. They keep everything. They know the ins and outs. They know the ins and outs. You know what I'm saying? They don't allow the shit to crash. Exactly. Like. One you of the can't guys, fire them. One of the guys on his way out uh, disabled Elon Musk account. Wow. Took him hours to get it back because, like, no one's willing to help. Like, right. Twitter really is going to collapse on himself if, if he's going the way that he's going just because you're not going to. Like, the new techs are very, very smart people. But, right. like, it's like trying to read something you wrote in your handwriting to a certain degree. Like, if you write crazy sloppy or whatever your programming style is, I'm just never going to get it Facts. because it's so personal to you. No, nah, it's 100%. That has nothing to do with how smart I am. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's that type of thing. So let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be funny when reality hits. He bought it for $44 billion. They forced his hand too, which was hilarious. Yes, because remember he put it out there. <laughs> hey, I bought Twitter, and then he had second that he had second he had second guessed it right. Yeah. So then he was like, "Listen, fam, you already put this out there. Yeah, if you back out now, we are gonna sue the hell out of you. So you better buy it, yeah. <laughs> right? Got, got no choice now. Yeah, got no choice now. But what I'm saying is that it's gonna be very funny the fact that he bought it for forty four billion, and it's gonna be worth six dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's happy it's not on the uh, exchange yo, market right now. It'd be like two dollars. Yo, it's crazy. It'd be nuts. It'd it's be it's disaster, bro. So, I ain't gonna lie. I'll buy it when it's low. Because <laughs> when somebody when somebody takes it, yeah, yeah, we go, we we gonna make some money here on all these yeah, podcasts. Man, so. We're gonna go on vacation, guys. Right? Saudi Arabia on me. Right? <laughs> Dubai. We're, yeah, we're gonna Dubai. We go to Dubai. But um, yeah. Let, let's get into these uh these Thanksgiving games. Um, they were good, man. Very, very, very. I good. thought it was gonna be a boring slate, but yeah. they gave it to us early. Detroit doing Detroit things, right. uh, keeping in the game till the last. Yeah, minutes. what do you think about that? The the, the 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 Lions, you know, going neck and neck with the uh, the Buffalo Bills. They've been going neck and neck with a lot of people, bro. Yeah. The Lions are frisky. The defense has been the thing that's very been holding them back. Uh, the offense, I feel like, can put up points with almost anyone. Yeah. Uh, but it's really the defense is just leaky, and especially in key situations. That's the worst part of it. It's like no matter how much you are down to the Lions, in key situations, you know you can get back and score, which is what Buffalo was able to do. Um, yeah, and very, I agree. Very exciting game. The Lions have been in a lot of games. They've been fun. They just they got to learn how to close these things out. And, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I like everything I see from the team, but they really got to build around DeAndre uh, DeAndre Swift because they don't really have receivers like that. Amon Ross St. Brown is cool. Oh, he's he's the he, man. He's the man, but I just feel like you, he's not someone you can count on just yet. Give him one more year. Give him one more year in the system, and he could be like a true number one. But I think this is a team that needs to build around the running back. I don't know if you need to run out and go get a quarterback right now, but, I mean, their record, their record is going to be so low. Yeah. They're going to have top picks, so they're going to have to make that move. They're a fun team, man. They haven't won a lot of games, but they're a good watch. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that they're they're trending in the right direction for the first time in a long time. I think that they're trending in the right direction for the first time since Jim Caldwell. Yeah. So, um, you know that that's a bright spot for them. I do believe that they need to move on from Jared Goff. I call him Jamie Lee Curtis, but uh, you know he definitely needs to. They they have to find somebody who who's young, who they can be able to build around. Yeah. Like, if you want to keep golf as a backup, there's nothing wrong with that. He's he's a very serviceable quarterback. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, going forward, he will be a backup quarterback going forward in his career. So that that's not something that, – that's not a knock for him, but I think his starting days need to be over um, if they can be able to find the right quarterback, obviously. Um they're not utilizing DeAndre Swift as I thought, but obviously he's had some injury concerns. Um, Jamal Williams has been really good for them. Yeah. You know, he's a touchdown machine. Um, but my issue was not with the Lions. I think that, like I said, they're trending in the right direction. My issue is with the Bills. They've been doing this a lot. The bro. Bills, over the last three weeks, I want to say three or four weeks, they've looked very shaky. Very shaky. Um, Josh Allen, I think he leads the league in interceptions. Um, he's very Brett Favre. Yeah, you know, he's second in the league in touchdowns, but when you lead the league in interceptions, 
that says a lot. Yeah. Um, especially when you have, you know, an utterworldly receiver like Stephon Diggs. You know, I think he still takes too many chances. And I think it's it's a the reason why that is is because they rely so heavily on him to do everything because he's basically their rushing attack. Yeah. He's basically, you know, their their guy at the line of scrimmage. Everything relies on Josh Allen, and they have to do something. This running game has been bad for years. Yeah. It's t- like I'm shocked that they didn't really try to get a home run hitter at the deadline. I know they got Naheem Hines, but he's another small yeah, back, small, just like Devin back, Singletary, yeah. just like who, just like the guys that they already have there. So I think going into the draft this season, or even in free agency. They have to address the running back situation. They need to go get themselves a bell cow. They have to. Yeah, um, Josh Allen has too much on his plate. But at the same time, I'm not going to show in the running game because Singletary can get between the tackles and give you something. It's the coaching staff. They got to rein him in every once in a while. Um, they got to they gotta keep him from hurting himself because those interceptions are costly. Yeah, he throws some bad interceptions. But then sometimes they're like, that should have been a running play. Yeah. That should have been an inside play. Why are you at the goal line taking seven-step drops? Yeah. I mean, that's when they had the interception yes, last yes, week. Yes, yes, yes. Like, those are things I feel like the coach should be helping you out. I understand you have, like, a super player in Josh Allen, but he's a gunslinger. And gunslingers, you got to save them from themselves. And, like, we like to throw the word gunslinger around. It's really – it's been, like – Brett Favre, the true gunslingers, Brett Favre, Tony Romo, now this kid. Yeah. And those are guys you got to save from themselves. Right. So, I mean, he's he's a young guy. He's going to get better. But I think the coaching staff needs to kind of rein him in. And even though you don't have the best run games, it's okay to take the ball out of Josh Allen's hands every once in a while. Well, I think I, I agree with you. That's I at think- the end of games. You shouldn't, be throwing, you shouldn't be throwing in the red zone when you're up two touchdowns. I mean, like, that's that's when you kind of try to salt the game away. I and think run it's in. hard for them because I think they think that if they try to rein him in too much, that he's not himself, right? Like, the reason why he is so good is because he takes these chances, is that he has the cannon to be able to throw into extremely tight windows, yeah. right? So taking that away from him may be a detriment right mm-hmm. so I, I i get you but it's it's a fine line that i think well, the coaching look, staff look at runs. patrick mahomes and kc yeah he has the green light go yeah but he throws an interception or he throws a bad ball and yeah. he's walking on him yeah and you see it right there well, on the i mean side. what you yeah. what were you thinking yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta get rid of the ball yeah, stop yeah, yeah. being flat he'll, he'll let him know right then and there so i mean at least the coaches got to put a little bit more accountability but like i said i think he's a young player i think he's a gunslinger he's going to be in the league he's going to be doing amazing things for a long time yeah but if he, every year now he's getting to these three four game slumps and right. i think it's really up to the coaches to kind of help him get out of that and and also too they can't stop the run yeah I think that's a lot of teams' problem this year. There's a, yeah, and and Von Miller going down is a problem. At all. It's a big problem, and it, it's they, it's not an ACL. No, it's an MCL. <sighs> yeah, but uh, I mean, it's still MCL. He can come back in three or four weeks, but yeah. it's, it's not going to be the same Von. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, they they have some concerns going forward, but um, you know, they they found a way to win that game, and you know, they are at this point. What are they? They're nine and three. Yeah, yeah. So, um, no, eight and three. So, next game we had. You know, I know you're happy, man. Going to brag a little bit. Yeah, that was, that was a gonna good brag game. a little bit. Nicole, I'm sorry. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, we, uh, we beat those Giants 28 to 20. It wasn't even that close. But, um, no. you know, I, I'm not going to dog Dak. I would say it was an uneven performance. We had. We had the Dallas Cowboy team that showed up against the Green Bay Packers in the first half. Mm -hmm. Second half of the game, it was the team that played the Minnesota Vikings last week. Right? So Dak cleaned it up. He had the rapport in the second half with with CeeDee Lamb, and they they did their thing. Micah Parsons, dominant as usual. That defense was all over the place. Um, Zeke had his best game of the season. Michael Gallup had his best game of the season. Um... 
But the penalties, Jeff. Yeah, it's gonna the kill penalties you the are still there. That's two hundred thirteen penalties. Team. You know they had one of the most dreadful halves I've ever seen a with a team that's defense is poor right poor. now. No they have a ton of injuries. They they had no cornerbacks, and they still were ended uh, ended up getting two interceptions. Like that's my thing with Dak Prescott six is that he will make some throws that. You look at you look at it and be like, how is he an NFL player? And then he'll make some throws that be like, that's why he's a forty million dollar guy, right? Mm. And that's why I tell people that he's the definition of average, right? You're gonna have your great games, you're gonna have your bad games, you're gonna have your great quarters, you're gonna have your really bad quarters. I don't think that you can be able to consistently win that way because you're not always going to have teams like the Giants that don't really have much right now that they're playing on straight effort great coaching by Brian Dable but if you're playing a team like the Tampa Bay Bucks and they have Tom Brady on the other side those mistakes you probably don't come back from you play a team like Kansas City those mistakes you don't come back from because if you give the ball up twice, they're going to capitalize on those on those interceptions. They're going to score. You're going to be down two or three scores going into halftime, and now you have to throw the ball more. And every time that Dak throws the ball more than usual, it's going to be a problem for the offense. So my thing is that great win. They picked up a win finally on Thanksgiving because they've been struggling over the last you know eight turkey days, but. Dak needs to start learning how to put together consecutively good performances. He's too uneven, bro. Thoughts? I mean, we're always going to disagree on Dak, Brian. I think we are. I feel like the last two games he played great. I think the second interception he threw again was on CeeDee Lamb. I feel like this season, CeeDee has hung him out to dry a couple times. He's the quarterback, so he gets in trouble for the interceptions. But they really don't be on him. Uh, I love the way the team played. I saw in the middle of the second half that they were just going to blitz the Giants. Uh, the Giants were definitely, again, great coaching playing over their heads. But the Cowboys were crossing the 50 the whole time. If It was the two interceptions that made them not score in the first half. So even though they weren't winning, it was like 13-7, to seven, I knew the Cowboys had that game lock, stock, and barrel because they were just moving the ball up and down on those Giants. And, I mean... Didn't, they're not going to play perfect games. I think they play well as a team. The defense leans on the offense and vice versa. I think you guys have a very, very potent offense. It's a passing offense, so there's going to be some interceptions thrown. No, we, we don't need those. We don't need them. talk to CD. He, Tom, he, he Tom, needs to get better. CD, CD, CD get better. wasn't the reason why he threw the first one. But you got to give your quarterback something. Like, quarterbacks ain't going to be perfect. But if I if I can't count on you as a receiver, I feel like a lot of Dak's interceptions this year have been on CD, not running the right route, um, giving up on routes, uh, stopping short. Like Now, I, I understand. I'm I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying about that. And he's that not a number one. About I think numbered, I'm watching uh, Omari Cooper play for the Browns, balling the fuck out. If he had a true number one on – balling out. Cooper's not a number one. It, Cooper's a tr- Cooper's a true number he one. He was here for three years, and every time he had a road game, he, he, he disappeared. Had a problem. He had a pro- so we're he, not that, gonna we we, nah. we cannot say hindsight twenty twenty what he's doing in Cleveland when he's getting no attention. Nobody cares about the Browns. You're you're with he, Dallas. Yeah, but he's still a number one receiver getting double coverage. If he's getting double coverage in Dallas and he frees up CD, and you have Dalton Schultz, now you have a much more potent. No, I agree time. with you. But what I'm saying is that he can look like a stud now in Cleveland because he's in Cleveland. He will look like a stud in Dallas in home games. You play 16 games <laughs> before they went 17. There was a game. You realize there was a there was a few games where he checked himself out of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, well, he was he's good for that. He did that when you. All the right, Raiders. then. So that's not a real number one for me. Nah, I'm on the field when he's playing. I think he can still do things that CD Lamb hasn't learned. And if you guys had both of them, I think you'd have a better passing attack. But you guys have a really complete team. Like, no, yeah, it ain't y'all, complete yet. Yeah, you guys are. Are a little spoiled. It ain't complete in my, yet, in my opinion. It ain't complete yet. You have a Super Bowl winning defense. You have a top five offense, and for the past three weeks, Doc Dak has been playing like a top five quarterback. No, he is not. 
I think I think pro football focus would say otherwise. Pro football focus don't know nothing <laughs> because I but I Guys love eight and three. I love yeah, and Dak has only played a handful of those games. Cooper Rush got us to 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 to, to where we at. Shouts to Cooper Rush. Shouts to Cooper Rush. Listen, you guys. If it wasn't for Cooper Rush, three, you we have would, one, You have one hard game left on your schedule. You guys, yeah, and we probably will. We, we probably win that game and lose to the bums because Dak is good for that. He good for that. We'll see, man. And I what think, we need I think is you should be happy with your team. Well, we, I'm, I'm very happy with the team once we get Odell. Once we get that's Odell, what need. That's we'll be the, fine. I think that's the key. That's the key to the playoff success. No, no, no. That's the key to Dak because if you have another guy like Odell out there, he may not throw a stupid ass pass. That's the thing with Dak. You're going to be guaranteed that he's going to throw at least five passes that are stupid that will cost you a game. I think you guys are strong enough to overcome that. Okay. All right. You we'll have see. two running backs, Thunder and Lightning. I love the way they've been using the both of them. Uh, 15, car- 15 touches each. T- Tony Pollard gets to go off, and Zeke still gets to do his work. Um yeah, I mean, listen, the defense has come alive. Your middle linebacker, of course, crazy. Michael Parsons is going ham. Diggs is going ham. Like, you got to be happy. Yeah, we'll be see. happy. We'll, 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 talk, happy, about, we'll talk about your Patriots after this. <laughs> Yo, it's your man DJ G Money from that Flip the Script podcast. Yeah, you see yeah, it? Yeah, we yeah. in the studio right now. Flip shut up. Yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, listen, oh. shout out to the Old Even podcast. My oh, man, he, Barry oh, Grant Jr. Whoa, 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 What's up, oh, man? Whoa, whoa. What happened? What you, what you, what you want to say to the people? Shout out somebody else's podcast? Yeah, my nigga's a joint. What's up? Oh, even. Oh, even podcast. Yo, it ain't even up here, boy. <laughs> we put this girl something. Oh, even. Yo, you. Oh, my God. What's up with you, man? Now, you going to have to shout out your keeping this? Yeah, keep all that. <laughs> you want to jump all the even podcast, right? Yeah, all shout even. Shout out to all even podcast, right? All yeah. even. Uh, That's your man? My man. All right, shout out to all even podcast. He cool? 100%. He cool. Is he? He cool? Let me see. Is he cool? Yeah. Welcome back, y'all. So, the last turkey game uh, between the Vikings and the Pats. Mm -hmm. Vikings win that game, was it a... 33 to... Hold on. 33-26? I'd have to double check, but I think Yeah, I think it's 33-26. That was a fun again. They they, they held us yeah. down. Yeah. Um, I was not expecting that to be a high scoring of a game, right? Especially with Mac Jones only putting up three points the week before, right? It was damn near a shootout. They yeah. were going 33 26, they were going back and forth, yeah, for a little while. So, yeah, Justin, Justin, Kirk, Justin, Kirk, Justin Kirk, Jefferson went off. Kirk oh Cousins God. threw some dimes, dimes. To, 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 to Justin Jefferson in the second half of that game. Um, and that's the thing with Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins has been. Extremely valuable for the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, you know he's not he's not somebody who's going to win you a lot of playoff games. We know this, but for a team like Minnesota, um, that their expectations are where they are, he's exactly what they need. Yeah. Um, he's had a very good season, man. Yeah, um, he has a coach who believes in him. His right. last coach didn't like him exactly, and, and that exactly. showed. Uh, um, but you know the Vikings, I I I think they're a bit of pretenders. They they have a great offense, I think, um, but that defense is not yeah, that great. Not that great. The um, offense gets stuck in the mud sometimes. They do. They do. Um, you know, Justin Jefferson is having a phenomenal season. We know that. Uh, but then the biggest story for me is on the other side of the, uh, of the field is, is the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. You know, Mac Jones. Best throws over 400 year. yards. Best game of his career. Yeah, this is his best throwing performance of his career. I thought it was at 389. Nah, I mean, you can pretty much call it 400. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 382, two touchdowns. Um, at a QBR of 56. And it wasn't Not no bad. garbage time either. No, like were, you know, it was it was a competitive game. So, you know, three, forward. you pretty much call that 400 yards. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, um, Ramondre Stevenson, uh, you know, really good factor back. But they need more they offense. They need more. They need more offensively, man. Yeah, I, I like I like um, Myers, the, the the wide receiver. I right? like Aguilar's the third because yeah. he made a beautiful touchdown yeah. catch, but he gets separation and just can't catch and loses right. the ball and lights. He's a good third because he's gonna always get open. Right, but he's not somebody he, he should be like your number one. Devontae Parker, I mean, I guess he was he had such high hopes for this guy. Uh, I wouldn't mind if they got rid of him. 
I know he's made some plays, but he, he's too big and too fast to not be a true number one, and he isn't for them, so you, you can get rid of him. Now, I, I love Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah. I'd keep Hunter Henry, but you, you need some real weapons, man. The catch that was no catch? <laughs> that was messed up because when Charles and Kelsey does that, they're giving it to him. They des them, bro. <laughs> I, I saw that play. I, I had PTSD. I ain't going to hold you. I was just like, that's what it, that's what it did to Des, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, as a Patriots fan, they spent all that money in free agency a few seasons ago. Yeah. Where do they go now? I, 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 they still need some skill positions on that team, one. But if you had to choose one, would you upgrade the skill positions or would you upgrade the coaching staff? We're not talking about Belichick. Bel- Belichick stays... But we're talking about upgrading the coordinators. Would you go skill positions or would you get better coordinators? I'd go skill position because uh, I don't feel like the coordinators has stuck out as being bad. Okay, they've had uh, they've had like three low scoring games, but they've actually gone back and forth with some people. Um, the Bears game was horrible. I hated that game. That was a soul crusher for me. Uh, to watch Justin Fields just run all over them. Right. But for the most part, I don't feel like Matt Patricia has really stuck out as being bad play calling. I don't feel like they have the guys. Yeah. Once you have the guys, even a bad play can turn into a good one. So Talent think, wins out, right? Yeah, I think talent wins out in that situation. I'm happy Mac is finally really starting to accelerate and become that quarterback, even though I'm still a little shaky on him. But you don't, you can't judge him. All every other quarterback has yeah. that one big receiver, at least that one guy that they can go to. It's kind of like Daniel Jones. Yeah, like you so can't you really evaluate guy. him. Yeah, but yeah, even Daniel Jones when him and Darry when Slate when him and Slayton are on the page, it's it's beautiful music. But Slayton, his knee is yeah. no, no bueno. He's gonna keep getting hurt, yeah. so he needs a guy. So yeah, um, but it, it's looking bright. As a, I was definitely, it was a lot of doom and gloom for the Patriots fans this summer. But uh, seeing that Bill can still just coach, like he his, his coach defense is just phenomenal yeah. to watch. I think that it's going to get them a while to get the offense. I don't expect them to make any noise this year. Hopefully, they make the playoffs. But I really see them going ten and seven, and it's and them not controlling their destiny. The only way they make it is somebody loses out. But um, it's not like we have nothing, so you know we, we just got to roll what we got and see if they can keep building next year. Now at six and five. Obviously, you guys are not going to be bad enough to get a high pick. Mm -mm. But my question for you is, as I said, as a resident Patriots fan here, um, do you trust Belichick to to draft? No. Because he can draft. He can can find the defensive talent. He can't find offensive talent. I think we need a GM. Right. A real GM. Yeah. A guy who's going to pick the groceries for him. Absolutely. And then he work with that. Right. Right. It's just been too many years of... Don't get me wrong. He always finds, like, the gem in the rough. But as far as winning Super Bowls, I don't feel like he's picked a difference maker in years. Offensively, I agree with you. Offensively, he hasn't picked a difference maker in years. And it's okay to give it up, man. Like, you're great at a lot of things. Let other people be great at their job. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I I agree, man. I think think you're 100% right in regards to just... You know, him giving up a little power, getting a GM, letting that guy, even if he can say, listen, you come in here, you pick the offensive groceries, I still got the defense, yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll work that way. You know what I'm saying? But they have to get some skill positions in here. These drafts the last few seasons have really blossomed, and you've seen some great offensive talent right, come yeah. out. And for the Patriots to not get any of them, it's like, you know, obviously they got Ramondre. Yes, you know, he's a talent. But, you know, they got to get some guys to be able to catch football. Exactly. Man. You know, you got to get some Make guys plays, that can be able to, right, man, like, some playmakers, run some, routes. Yeah. You know, you don't need the speedsters, but you need guys that can be able to play that position, you know, professionally. You, you, and guys great. you could throw 50-50 balls. So yeah. I know that's not his game, but, I mean, the NFL is changing. Get right. yourself a big body. Yeah. I feel like he could have did so much with DK Metcalf. Oh, man. a lot of teams. A lot of teams. Yeah. But, like. I don't think I think DK Metcalf's career would be completely different as a Patriot because yeah. I don't I have my I have my trepidations with him. He's like has the number one body, number one skill set, but he's not he's not as physical as you expect him to be. Exactly, and I feel like Belichick yeah. could could scheme him yes. up in a way. No, I agree. To keep consistently like I, I've open. seen a lot of lot of games where he he's been taken out of games physically. 
You know what I mean? And that should never happen. That should never happen. With a guy bro. like him. You know what I mean? He has the Calvin Johnson build. Yeah. Yeah. And like, faster. So. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I You know, I, I'm curious to see what direction the Patriots go in in the offseason. Um, but they definitely need some help ASAP. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mac Jones needs some help ASAP. Because it's not, like you said, we can't really truly evaluate the kid Unless you put some real weapons around yeah. him and say that he's the problem of why they're not maturing and, and moving, uh, you know, moving forward and progressing. You know what I mean? So I, I'm definitely with you on that. Plus, I'm, I'm I'm a big Belichick fan. Yeah, the Rams were for Stafford. They were able to see, hey, yeah. golf, we exactly. have weapons. We right. have a team. It's clearly you. It's clearly you. Right. And then they get a guy and then look what happens. Super so. Bowl. Yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. Um, moving on. Moving on. Our boy Aaron Rodgers. Um, Love him as a quarterback, starting not to like him as a person. Correct. You know, he's had a very, very tumultuous season. Um, And the biggest news that just came out now is that he's been dealing with a broken thumb the entire year. So, based on what we've seen this year from the Packers, from his play, does it illuminate anything for you? Does it kind of make you feel a little bad for him? Or is it just one of those things where it's a it's just, you know, the collection of bad press that's happened this year? Is it just like it's exhausting at this point? It's easier to feel bad for you when you're not pointing and the finger at your teammates. Right. Like, you're not playing bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we understand why you were playing bad, but that doesn't excuse everything else. I mean, you calling your teammates out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Calling them out. And then turning around playing like garbage and then saying it's everybody else but me. Right. Like, we could take those with a grain of salt and be like, oh, okay, his thumb was hurt. Now it makes sense. But with everything that's happened in these fast weeks, like, I don't even want to really hear that from Facts. you. You've made yourself so infallible that that shouldn't even really be an excuse, even though it is. It is. Like, the way things have played out, like, I don't want to hear that from Aaron Rodgers. No, nah, I agree. I agree. Like, I've had the team yeah. come out and said something, like, I'd have been fine with it, maybe. But even with, with everything that happened these past few weeks, like, no, dude, like, you put your big boy pants on and go out there because exactly. you can't. Put it on everybody else, right? And then now it's like, oh my, yeah, because because at, at this point, <laughs> at this point, what he should have did was he should have kept his mouth shut, and then after the season, if it comes out that he had a broken thumb, then he had a broken thumb. Yeah. But for you to try to possibly get sympathy points exactly. at this point, nobody's feeling sorry for you. Like somebody else can be a sympathetic figure. Aaron Rodgers can never be a sympathetic figure exactly. at any point. You understand what I'm Especially saying? Especially when you try to be the smartest guy in the room Correct. all the time when things like this happen, Correct. they have to fall on you. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, it's it's tough. I'm sure it's extremely tough to throw a football with a broken thumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shouts to him. But at the end of the day, this is the situation. You are the quarterback. You take the bullets. You take the blame when, when the team loses. And you get the praise when the team wins. Yeah. So, you know, if this is the reason why you guys have been struggling – it's gonna fall on your hands regardless. It if makes you're not, sense, but it's on you. Right. If it, it, if you're not on the IR, that means that you're healthy enough to play, yep. and there's no excuses. Yep. You feel what I'm saying? Yep. So, sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Like, but I mean, does this does this give you? It does, because there was some yeah. throws that were missed. Games. I mean, the, it the, makes the, sense. The guys going season after season throwing four interceptions. And he already has seven. Right. So, like, it does make sense. It's a, it's it's not an excuse. It's right. a reason. Right. It's just that you've been so demonstrative in the way you talk to the media, the way you talk to the press, the way you talk to your teammates. We're not trying to hear that from Facts. you. Facts. So, in another world, I, I would be able to give him that or give him that sympathy, but not not this season. Not yeah, after yeah. everything uh, you, you've put us all through. Nah, so. I'm with you. I'm with you. I think I think it it the 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 one question that it answers in my head is that he's not... He's not done. He's not done. He's not right? done. Right? There's something that's hindering his performance um, that may be even a better reason for him to get out of Green Bay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so so we'll see what happens next season, you know, his bounce back year. Yeah. But, you know, it's... it Like I said, shouts to him for actually playing through a broken thumb. I'm sure it's tough, but... Yeah. yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, we <laughs> I got one for him, right? 
I got one for him. I got one for him. Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> that that's just basically yeah. that's basically where we are at this point, right? So um moving on, moving on. Uh did you hear this whole Deion Sanders situation? Yeah, man. I mean, they're always gonna give him, uh, my guy a hard time to, hard time to climb to the top. But I think it's crazy when they literally try to use your success against you. Yes. So, you know, for, for those that don't know, Deion Sanders had a, he had an academy that, you know, there was some bad business dealings and, you know, some things happened and they had to close it and there was some lawsuits and you know, not really his doing, but when you're the face of yeah, things, you're, it's, it's, yeah. it's, you're going to fall on the sword, right? So, you know, he gets to Jackson State, he's he's at this HB, you know, HSBCU and he's doing a great thing. He's building up this 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 black program and, you know, really putting eyes on 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 these black colleges and it's great. But this is a guy that needs to be a division 1 coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's no reason why every school in the nation that doesn't have uh, Nick Saban that doesn't have uh, Dabo. You, you know Dabo or you know all these other big coaches should not be calling primetime yeah. at this point and saying what do you want and how fast can you be here you feel what I'm saying but there was a uh, there was a an article that came out and I want to I want to find it because I, I, I want to bash this this dude for, for putting out the article um, I'm trying to find it Deion Sanders, USF, Colorado. Col- I can't spell Colorado. Okay, I'm um, trying to see. Okay, so Colorado has offered Jackson State head coach Deion Sanders. Right, so Deion Sanders reportedly in talks with Colorado and South Florida about head coaching jobs. So basically, in a nutshell, um... This reporter wrote an article bringing up all of these negative things about Deion Sanders that can hinder his chances of getting a D1 job. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, cherry picking. Correct me if I'm wrong. Lane Kiffin, you got all these other coaches that have left programs in rubble and still get another D1 job. Yep. They're not going to high school. They're not going down to 1A. They're not, they're not going to HSBCUs. And they're not going to none of those, right? They're going to D1 schools after having violations and a yep. whole bunch of bullshit. But prime time, just because he has some situation, some you know, the academy yeah. folded, it's a problem. That, you see what I'm saying? Like yeah. This is why, for me, when people like to shy away from the race card, I go head on into it. Because nobody ever has anything bad to say about Deion Sanders. Yeah. He's a good person. Good person. Motivator. You know what I mean? Like, like knowledge, his IQ of the game is second to none. And you're still going to have people throwing slings and arrows at him. For what? We all know why. He's cocky within bounds. He's right. never too much. Correct. It's always brash and flashy, yeah. but he never goes over That's the top. That's just who he is. That's just who he is. You know what I mean? And like, they just feel like they just look for reasons to put uh, hurdles. But, like, I'm going to be honest. A guy like Deion, he, he's going to land on his feet, man. He's going to be fine. He's going to be fine, man. Like, whether he gets the D1 job or he stays at Jackson State, he's good. And college is all about recruiting. So, Facts. at the end of the day, y'all shooting yourselves in the foot. Right. Whoever does pick him up is it's gonna going be to be a powerhouse. Three years. Exactly. Easy. Exactly. So... He just better stay out of you know, USC way. I don't, don't come, don't come anywhere near my school because I don't, want, I, I, I don't want I that smoke. I definitely want to see Dion on the on the D one stage, yeah. and I, with with a with a chance. I want to see him on the NFL stage. That's what I want to see. Because that's I, something he wants, though. No, I think no. he wants to work with college. Yeah, yeah. yeah nah, he he do, his... he doesn't want to work with pros because yeah. at the end of the day, with pros, you know, you're dealing with like massive egos, mm. right? And it's a it's a completely different situation. Yeah, I think he's so, super into the kids. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Be able to inspire right. them, yeah. and and you know what I mean. Like it's I it's a yeah. Thing. I agree. I agree. Um. So hopefully, 
you know, he gets one of these two jobs. If not, he can stay at Jackson State and continue to dominate and wait until something else comes up. Yeah. So, um, but he's he's definitely he, going to get. But he does need to move from Jackson State because I don't think they have the budget to do everything Dion needs to be able to do. Well, I he's mean, they're too big. A, a yeah, character. they're doing so. They're doing good so far. But I understand what you're saying. Um, did you hear the other news? Mm. Do you know who's possibly getting a D one job? Oh, uh, Matt Rule. Yes. Yeah, of course. Come on. Like man. we but we said Come this. On, <laughs> we said this, didn't we? Come on. Man. Matt Rule gets fired and we were like, yeah, he's gonna get a college job yeah, soon. A good one. A good one. <laughs> and lo and behold, Nebraska comes calling. Yeah. It's crazy. So, so he can be able to walk back into college scot free, but they looking at prom time like collecting the seventy yes, million. Co- yeah, collecting, still. still collecting from NFL team, yes. Make round, it make sense. Round and round. Make it make round. sense. Round and round we go. Yeah, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I'm I'm gonna get on my high horse right now. Mm. I was talking to the silent assassin off off camera, and I hate our society. And I, I don't use the word hate a lot, yeah. but I hate it. Okay. I come from a time we. Come yeah, from a time different times. where we remember how things were. Listen, you know, our commercials were better back then. They had jingles for every fucking thing. <laughs> like, I mean, our commercials was hot. Sitcoms was hot. You know, things just meant like we had characters, characters. back then. We had personalities in our in our athletes. We had personalities on camera. Our movies were a little bit more dynamic. Depth. They had depth. They're more depth, right? And there wasn't something called cancel culture. Yeah. Right? I bring this up because going back to, you know, we're sticking on the football topic. Some dude found a picture of Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 65, 66 plus years ago of him in Arkansas, you know, behind the lines when they were trying to integrate the schools, um, obviously on the opposition. Right now, at that point, Jerry Jones is 14 or 15 yeah. years old. Young kid. Now, six. How can anybody look at an 80 year old man and look at that picture and try to cancel him? Yeah. Now, Grant, listen, if he was there, if they caught a picture of him at a lynching. I mean, it was a pretty innocent picture. I but, mean, right. For for the time, his part in the picture was innocent. Let me say that it wasn't an innocent picture. His but for part, the times, it's for a the ba- time, yes. that's kind of what was going on. Absolutely, then. the guy went to the school. Right, you see a big commotion, a big thing. You, at Fourteen years old, you're gonna run over and see what was happening. Um, it didn't look malicious. Didn't look like he was participating. I'm not necessarily trying to give the guy a pass, but like I can't get angry over. Kind of nothing. Yes, like it's the 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 fact that he was there is the something, but that's all you have. So it's like that's what I'm saying. But it's like, like what are we canceling? Right? Like, why are people like this, bro? Like it's meme culture. It it's meme culture, bro. It's things that are supposed to be kind of funny that we're supposed to say in our little group chat that no one ever reads where we get to actually be ignorant and not necessarily look at facts and feelings and everything because we're just joking one another, one another. But then meme culture, you put on these squares and you send it out and now it's like law and reality right. and fact. When so it's not. when somebody makes the joke, Oh, they better do him like they did Kanye and Kyrie, which is an actual joke in the comment section. Right. Somebody blows it up, puts it on the square, and now it's actually a thing right. that we got to quasi-cancel this guy or for something that happened with sports. I see it happen with so many things yeah. that in my mind, it's like, oh, this is supposed to be a joke that stayed in the comment section. Right. But now we're really trying to act on this. Because you know what happens at the end of the day, right? We live in a society that can't take a joke anymore. Yeah. We we live in a society that comedy has been under siege for 20 years, mm. right? So things are so hypersensitive because nobody finds things funny anymore. Or I'm not saying that this is funny. What I'm saying is that we live in a culture that micro-analyzes 
everything. 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 When it doesn't have to be like that. Like, I was telling Nicole off camera, I said, you see this? This is the most dangerous thing mm -hmm. to somebody that has nothing to do. Right? Somebody who is trying to make their career off of putting out something like this. Right? Mm -hmm. To try to better themselves, you're destroying somebody. Yep. That's horrible. And what made this even worse for me is that I'm a big Joy Reid fan. Joy she Reed? works for MSNBC. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, shouts to Joy Reid, the readout on MSNBC. She posted this on her IG, and I was just, why? Like, why is this something that you have to now shed light on? Exactly. This is a 14-year-old white man in Arkansas at that time you can never look at a 14-year-old and hold them to it 66 years later. And then look at everything he's done in the 66 years. And look years. at the things that he's done. Look at the people that he's had contact with. Look at the people who've had nothing but really good things to say about Jerry Jones that look like me and you. Yeah. Now, obviously, not everybody's going to have everything nice to say about you, but that you can say that about anybody, right? But Jerry Jones has done really good things. And he's, you know, had really good relationships with a lot of people. A lot of, and a lot of past players right. feel very highly, they, they feel like he's a friend. Yes. And mind Father you, figure. yeah, you can make the argument that, oh, he owns a league. He has to pay them. Right. There's a salary cap. It doesn't matter. The fact that we have a relationship afterwards does matter. It does matter. Because you could just pay how me he, and I go on my how way. How he takes care of Cowboy players after, after they retire. He doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to do that. So, I mean, it's not a good look visually, but I think this is this is a reach. And the fact that society. he came out and addressed it. Addressed it. And, and was honest about it. it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, I, that's all I need from him. He didn't try to deny it. He didn't try to make you know try to pretty it up or dance around it he said listen i was 14 years old i was it wasn't a a, a position for myself of opposition it was more of intrigue yeah. like seeing what was what, what was going, going on, on. you know 14. what i'm saying a 14 years old dude you like see a crowd drawing we, you gonna run like, over there. Look, i'm i'm looking in the camera i gotta stop yeah i gotta stop Everybody has things that they've done when they were 15, 14, getting into high school. You just learning about yourself. We make mistakes. If somebody pulls that up 60 years later, you're going to look at them like, what are you, yeah. what are you stupid? I think one of the things that I first started circulating was like, oh, yeah, see, this is why he's never hired a black coach. And I was just like, ah, uh, let's not conflate. Like, the come two. on, let's man. It's just, it's too that. much, bro. Yeah. Like, people, yo, everybody, everybody's smart nowadays. And what, what I'm starting to realize is that, we got some stupid people out yeah, there, bro. We got some stupid people that are in high places. And that's the problem. That's the problem. We have too much influence and too many idiots behind that influence. But after the break, we're going to talk about um, a topic that's going to make me laugh. Um, Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson. Always makes me laugh. The mother slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the break. Yo, this is Cigar Jensen Gals. I want to give a shout out to my boy Barry for leaving the podcast. Keep doing your thing, bro. Killing it. Welcome back, y'all. Um, I'm over here laughing before I even get into the topic. Um, I love this. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, the Jets decide to bench Zach Wilson. Um, you know he's five and two as a starter, and that doesn't happen much when you're five and two as a starter. Mm -hmm to get benched but at this point i think it was their only their only option after the press conference that was definitely their only option yeah. you're not starting next week after saying that i'm so, you can't score three points your defense have 10 points and then say no that the offense didn't let the defense down what bro have you watched any other professional quarterback your entire life i, I don't think he has that's the problem i think you see the thing is with zach wilson Zach Wilson comes from privilege. Zach Wilson didn't have to struggle and work his way up in certain situations. 
he was given things yeah. very easily. Went to BYU, clean school. They don't have a great conference, right? They don't play a lot of good teams yeah. year in and year out. So what happens is that he can be able to do all the wild, tough throws and look good and be brash and arrogant because he doesn't play heavy competition. Exactly. But however, when Coastal Carolina and those teams do come, he loses and struggles. I remember before he got drafted where the Jets the Jets were lasered in and on I drafting never understood this kid, that. and I, I never, never understood, understood it. They were not budgeting Yeah, at all. I was like, you have all of these quarterbacks out here, and you're lasered in on this kid? And I remember speaking to a lot of Jets fans, and shouts to Claw. I said to Claw, I said, listen, if they're going to go the Zach Wilson route, I think they need to package that pick, and they need to go get themselves a veteran quarterback. Yeah. Go get themselves a because if you're going to stake your franchise on that kid, you're going to fail. I just didn't see what they I didn't saw. See it. Like, I didn't see it. I understood why Mac was going high. I understood right. why, even Justin though he Fields, didn't play a lot, Trey Justin Lance. Fields, Trey. Like, they, they made noise in college and right. looked great doing it. Yes. I understand why they... But, like, I, I really never got... Now, I'm not even saying that he can't be good or couldn't be good, but there's always a point in the draft where teams are even looking. Where they, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, they never got off the number two. Never got off it. So it was, it was just really like strange they were, to like me. They had, he had that one pro day, made that one throw at pro yeah. day, and they were just like, see, this is why we're... Like, no, dude. And then, yeah, you and then like, who's who's doing these evaluations? Like, how can you swing and miss so badly? Because it's one thing to draft him in the second round, but then there was no competition for him to be the starter. Yeah, just basically gifted him the job. Yeah, and yeah, you, there needs to be more competition because you got you got you give a guy like this the job. Hopefully, he's a tough kid because I don't think they should bench him for the rest of the season. I do. He definitely needs to be. You still you still want to. Still want to grow the kid. I mean, just, just flock all behind him, bro. Listen, it's, I, I keep it real with you. I keep it 100 with you, Six. You know, he later apologized, right, and said that he was wrong. Granted, that's cool. Damage is done. I think he's lost the locker room. Yep. I think he lost the locker room a long time ago, and this was just the icing on the cake. Yeah. So, for me, you can't go back to him this year. Because they don't want him back this year. Next year is a completely different situation. If he shows up to camp and he's mature, he can be able to earn that respect and that trust again, that's fine. This year, he's done. There's no reason for him to ever get into that game again unless there's injury or unless they look... They, but, but my thing is that they can't look any worse. <laughs> They can't look in. They can't look any worse with any other quarterback they have. Whether it's Mike White, whether it's Joe Flacco, they're not going to look any worse. Yeah. If Mike White was playing that game against the Pats, they beat the Pats. If Joe Flacco was playing that game against the Pats, they beat the Pats. So he's he needs to sit. If he sits and gets better, cool. If he doesn't, the Jets need to learn from the Cleveland Browns and cut bait. Early well, before that, you can't. That's why I wanted to play him the rest of the year. That way you know I think without they know a shadow now. of doubt that you can cut bait I think him. you know now. He makes mistakes. They're bad in deceptions, too. Bad. They're bad in deceptions, too. He, 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 he can't. He does not recognize defense as well. That's one. Two, he cannot locate open receivers. That's two. And three, he does not go through his progressions well at all and he that's stares why, receivers down and that's why i hated the pushback against elijah moore i feel like he right. handled that situation as best as he could right but you still had jets fans oh you were winning you should just shut up and not complain oh get this guy off the team well maybe now like it, it was deeper maybe he was like listen i he was if telling I got, you the if whole i gotta time. play with this dude yeah he was telling i need you the, the ball. whole time yeah and it's like when are we gonna start listening to these athletes like why is it why can't we question the quarterback right. at all? I, there's ways to do it. Yes. He's the most important guy on the team. Correct. But the way he did it, I felt was pretty valid. So, yeah. like, why are we not allowed to say, hey, man, this guy isn't doing his job and he needs to step up yeah. so that I can do my job? 
Like, I, th- I think that it's messed up that we were ready to crucify Elijah Moore, bench him, take him off the team down at third. And three weeks later, we see what Zach is really doing out here. I, you, you, want me to, you want me to have a hot take right now? Yeah. Hold on. You ready? I think what we're seeing in New York is what the Washington, whatever team you want to call them, what they were before. I don't want to use the name. Should have kept football team. Yeah. <laughs> but what Washington dealt with with RG3 and Kirk, and Kirk Cousins. I think, and I've been telling people this from day one, Mike White is a better quarterback than Zach Wilson. We'll see. Because I, I think I love the way he looked in the Bengals game. Yeah. Mike White year. can play. He won he won a game last year, played three games. You know, obviously he made his mistakes as well, but that's a guy that can make NFL throws. And he looks poised. And he looks poised. Wilson looks skittish in the pocket. Correct. He's ready to small, you know, when you're small, brash, and arrogant. I said it on Twitter a few, you know, probably a week ago. I said that. He is bad as he's as bad as our, uh, um, uh, Sam Darnold, and he has the same attitude Manziel. as Baker May, uh, Mayfield. Okay. That's a horrible combination to have. Horrible. Yeah. So for me, they need to go to Mike White. They need to not look back, and it's about winning games at this point. Robert Sala is in the business of winning football games. Yeah. He's not in the he's not in the business of babysitting quarterbacks. Because at the end of the day, if Robert Sala doesn't win 10 games this year and they end up struggling next year, guess what's going to happen to Robert Sala? The they should have won that Patriots game. Bro. Yeah, of course. They're no business. And that's, that and that's, where, that's why we, we are where we are now. There's a, there's a ton of frustration. I've heard, I've heard some backlash um, about Robert Sala. Oh, he's too emotional. You know, you can't, you can't make that emotional uh, type of decision. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I don't know. After after hearing your quarterback yeah. do that. And it wasn't even a thought. He was like, nah, nah. I, just I, arrogant. I didn't mess up. I, I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't no. go back to defense. No. I, I didn't, there was I no down, though. further explanation. Yeah. There was no, it was just no. That, that to me, when he did that, it looked just like an entitled child. He could have been like, oh, it was a tough team. We moved the ball pretty well. You never want to not score, but I don't think I let them down because I did everything to keep them out of harm's way. Like, you didn't give her, like, a nice – you was just like, nah, I did yeah. my job. Yeah. Did you? <laughs> so, so, I mean, he put that on himself. Yeah, so I am very happy that they benched his ass. Um, I think Mike White is worlds better than him. Um can he get better? I mean, anybody can get better. I is, think he is, can. is he He's willing good. to get better? Yeah. Is he willing to be take that next step and be mature and do the things that he needs to do to be able to one start learning the playbook better, understanding how to break down defenses and what they're giving you, and earn the respect of your the teammates respect back. Your teammates. Because as a quarterback, they always tell you as a quarterback, when you're the quarterback of a team. You praise your teammates, and everything is your fault. Mm-hmm. Everything. Eli Manning for Nicole's precious Giants over there. Eli Manning did it the right way. Uh, when Eli, when the Giants lost, Eli Manning stood at that podium and took the bullets. When they won, he let the other guys, he let the other guys talk. That's what you do. He got it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He got it. He understood what was needed. That was a guy that was built to play in New York. And he knew it. That's why he didn't want to go to San, San Diego at the time. He said, you, dra- you draft me in San Diego, I ain't going. I ain't going there. I won't go to New York. So, you know, this kid, Zach Wilson, needs to grow up a yeah, lot. hopefully the benching does that to him. Yeah, Because we've lot. seen Baker Mayfield grow up this season. Grow up what? I mean, that benching hurt. Yeah, but he's doing what he has to do, Baker Mayfield. What is he doing? Up. What he got to do? Whatever he's doing. He, he sucks. He does suck. But, like, he, you can see the arrogance is gone. What could you be arrogant at this point? <laughs> some guys will still give it to you. Yeah, bro. some guys will still give it to you. So I can definitely see Baker Listen, Mayfield starting somewhere else. I ain't gonna lie to you. This I can't see how Baker Mayfield can ever continue to be arrogant when you <laughs> you get replaced by a dude. PJ Walker, bro. That now nah, we not even talk about that. You get replaced by a dude that's currently suspended and likes to <laughs> likes to get certain massages. Right, so they'd rather take a risk on that dude, yeah. pay him guaranteed money, than have you step through that field again. 
right? Crazy. Then you go to Carolina, and they just like, yeah, we'd rather see the dude that we basically XFL. haven't seen in a while. XFL guy, we want, we want him. And then say, well, we're going to wait till Sam comes back, and then we, we're going to play him too. Nuts. Nuts. I, I think he gets his Marcus Mariota year. I can see Baker starting somewhere in two years. You need to stop it. Yeah, he's gonna get. They recycle. They recycle these trash bags all the time. Man, yeah, yeah. Just to see what happens. Dummy. Hey, it happens, man. The, 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 don't you don't you spread no big <laughs> nonsense on my show? Okay, he's terrible, and he's not gonna get no starting job no more. We'll and see. if any team gives him a starting job, whoever that GM is, and he get fired. We'll see. He get fired. Okay, move me on. <laughs> we going. Um. What do we got? Pick of the week? Pick of the week already? Yeah. Are we going to keep it football? Yeah, pick uh, of the week. Yeah, I guess. But before pick of the week, obviously, I I, I need to need to get my read. Jimmy, you bet? Yes. This is a good answer. <laughs> Nicole, what about you? You bet? You better bet. Right? You already know my bookie all day. What about you? On my bookie all day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Checking them lines. Okay, out. better check them lines. Every commercial right. break. So, sports betting is intense enough. You shouldn't need to sweat your payouts. My bookie has a no strings bonus that lets you cash in and cash out quick. Follow the link in the description of this video and use promo code even on a deposit of $50 or more and you can receive up to $200 in cash instantly to your MyBookie account. Using this bonus is simple. Bet your deposit amount once and you're ready to cash out. There's no strings attached with MyBookie. Hammer this bonus on MyBookie so you can focus on what's important Thanksgiving week, family, Food, securing that money bag as well as Black Friday, y'all. Go out there and go shop. Get your TV, half price if you want that thousand dollar TV. Maybe you get it for three hundred dollars. Who knows? I know I'm gonna be getting my game chair for mm. about fifty dollars in, <laughs> in a couple hours. You know what I mean? Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, only with my bucky. So, pick of the week. Pick of the week. Who you got, Jeff? Um, pa, 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 pa. I, 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 can I do this? I don't know if I can look myself in the mirror and do this. I love my San Francisco 49ers, they're my Super Bowl pick uh -huh. to repeat our going against the Chiefs. But I love my New Orleans Saints defense, these guys have been underrated a little too long. Mm. My man Cameron Jordan is still a beast. The line is minus nine and a half. I know, but I feel like Andy Dalton has been throwing a couple of touchdowns. Uh -huh. Taysom Hill could run some in. I think uh -huh. that defense is going to be stifled. I think the Niners win, but I'm taking the New Orleans points, bro. Cause it's not they're not they're not losing by no ten points. Okay, so you got you got you got forty nine is money line, and you got and you got uh New Orleans points. New Orleans, Orleans points. Plus nine and a half. That's okay. Forty nine okay. money line is too much for me. All right, that I, I like that one. I like that one. I'm gonna go out on a limb again because I, I'm I'm into the big home run bets. Mm. All right, I'm not into the the ones that may be called safe. <laughs> you know, this is this is not what I do here. Okay, this is not what I do here. I want you to put. Fifty dollars and win fifty thousand. That's the type of person I am. All right, I live on the edge. Mm. Okay, so because of that, I'm taking the Jaguars Ravens game. Jaguars I'm taking Ravens. I'm taking that Jaguars Ravens game. Listen, uh, Lamar Jackson's a little banged up. They probably might get slipped. All right, they got Baltimore minus three and a half on the mm. road. I like the Jaguars to win this game. All right, win. Outright win money line. I'm not I'm not taking the points. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Okay. I take the money line for the Jaguars. If you want to make some money, take that bet. Take it. One o'clock. And take it. Dogs. I'm with it. With my bookie. I'm with it. That was good. That was a good segment. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. See, see, see? you, you like that bet? Yeah, I do. You, you you bashed me last <laughs> week, and you were right. You were right about that. I appreciate that. Yeah, you called me out on that, but that's all right. This one solid. Solid. Okay, this is a solid I like one. It. Yeah, yeah. After the break, we got some um, got some NBA talk to about mm. some interesting topics. Yeah, a couple of things going on. Yeah, in the league. yeah, yeah. He has changed the game 
whether you like it or not, he's changed it. He's impacted the game in some fashion or form. I, I'm going to find a ball miss for you to go to. <laughs> and you go, you're going to turn that motherfucker out. <laughs> yeah, all the gals watching. <laughs> Grab him, him if you got him. If you got him. <laughs> All the gals watching, minus, <laughs> minus six. And I would like to formally welcome you to... Welcome. And welcome. And welcome. To the grid. To the grid. To the grid. To the grid. Welcome to the grid. And, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the grid. grid. Welcome to the grid. Welcome back, y'all. Did you hear the new Superman versus Superman beef? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just happy Dwight's standing up for himself. Yeah. So Shaq, if people don't know, Shaq is clowning Dwight. He's playing in Taiwan. He going didn't get in, off. Yeah, going <laughs> off. He's averaging like 40, 30, and 15 Throwing assists. The glass shoot, 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 shooting threes. <laughs> shooting threes. Looking like Giannis out there. He's wilding, right? So Shaq is like, yeah, when you out there playing guys that are 5'8", you can look like that, right? So Dwight snap claps back and says, listen, don't come at my teammates. And, you know, you're always hating. And it's just like, is Shaq, does, is Shaq doing this? Just for entertainment purposes, or is there really does he really have an issue with Dwight? Because at this point, it's like Dwight's no longer in the NBA. Dwight has ha he Shaq has had a Hall of Fame career. Dwight's gonna be in the Hall of Fame as well. Mm. You know they're they're polar opposites in regards to how they played the game, but it's like it feels a little bit more personal from Shaq. Yeah, uh, he is an LA fan. A true fan. Right. So the way Dwight played when he was in L.A. might have like just got got. Well, shot he up. used to needle him even before that, though. Yeah. When well, he was in the, Orlando. From, from the Superman thing, right. Shaq never really liked him. Because think about it. They kind of followed the same path because Shaq started in Orlando. Yeah. Dwight started in Orlando. Shaq moves to L.A. Dwight right. gets traded to L.A. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shaq wins a championship in, in, in with the Lakers. Dwight wins a championship in the Lakers. So... Their careers are very, very similar in regards to the paths that they took in regards to. I think it's just the success. alpha athlete thing when somebody's yes. close to you or close to doing something you can do, you, you knock them down. And I think, too, I think Shaq looks at Dwight as like the Wario. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's kind of like, okay, you have, you're, you're this physical freak. You never really dominated the way you were supposed nah. to. Like for Shaq, you know, Shaq is a Shaq is one of those fraternity type guys yeah. where it's like, yo, as a big man, you gotta hold us down. You know what I'm saying? You gotta if I was dominant, I wanna see a guy that that comes along that can be able to carry the mantle just like I did and not let the center position die. Yeah. And I think Shaq looks at Dwight as one of the reasons. The position is I why the center position has faded in the NBA. Why it's not it's not a it's not a center dominant game anymore. That he 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 will never come out and say that. Yeah. But I'm sure he feels that way. And you know that, what I'm saying? Yeah, but Shaq I mean Shaq talks about everyone. So well, I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I love that analysis. I didn't think of it that way. I just thought he was being a hater. Yeah. But no, nah, it definitely might be something deeper to it because he's been on uh, Dwight's uh, Dwight for a long time. Long time. So long time. And I mean, what's what's even the problem? Like Dwight is killing in Taiwan. He should be. He got right. that NBA training. Yeah. We kind of expect that. Let now. him listen. That's what the fans want to see. Now, if he out there dropping yeah. 50, 30, and twenty. Let him do that. He's having fun. Like. Come on now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, that, that's, we, we, we're not going to spend too much time on that, but I, it was just, it was just pretty funny how Shaq is really dogging this man <laughs> for, for playing out there with the, you know, like, with, yeah, with the Taiwanese. Like, going, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. You, you, get, you got to bounce from team to team. Right. You, go I, you know, maybe thing. Shaq, maybe Shaq mad because <laughs> by, by, by 38, Shaq was, Shaq was broken down. You know what I'm saying? Couldn't play no more. Um. Moving on to Pat Bev aye, aye, aye. being suspended three games. Now, the reason why I bring this up and the reason why this is news to me is, do you feel that the three-game suspension is warranted? 
Oh, these are history. It's supposed to be one game. But this really. ain't the FBI, bro. Like, this, see, the thing is, this is what this is what made me mad, right? Since when is the NBA the FBI? When since when do they do they do they pile up a case on you and then bring the hammer down? Right? Nah, when, you got, you, for some people, you got to. But think about it. When he pushed Chris Paul in the playoff That's game, That's in the back, right? Yeah, in the back. They somebody. gave him one game for that. Yeah. You should have gave him multiple games for that, right? Because that was an offense that you could have, A, you could have hurt Chris Paul. Mm-hmm. You could have really, like, did damage. And, and, and B, it's a, it's a dirty hit, yeah. right? That is not the same as this one. They're two different situations. Pat Bev has a history of playing rough and people call him dirty. That's I'm not I'm not yeah. going to debate that, you know what I'm saying? I used to I I I used to call him the resident cheerleader. <laughs> He's on my team now. He's a resident cheerleader for us now, right? But this situation is not the same. Yeah. Right? We saw why he did this. This was not any him getting salty that Chris Paul is busting his ass. This was, this was more of he's defending his teammate. Yeah. Where Devin Booker takes a shot at Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves is on the floor. Devin Booker is, is standing over him. And then all of a sudden, DeAndre Ayton is standing over him with a, with a basketball. Yeah. So now, Patrick Bev is looking at the refs like, okay, y'all are not going to step in and do anything. I'm going to step in and do this. Because that's where he's and from. the bigger man, too. He went yeah. out to A. So you know what I mean? Sorry. And laid his ass out, too. A was on the floor like a little chump. <laughs> Seven foot tall on the floor. You get laid out by somebody who's 5'11". Come on now. Right? But my thing is that the NBA piling up this Rico case on him don't make sense. Like, give him the adequate amount of games for that, that yeah, one. Yeah, I thought it should be one game. And there's no reason for, to give him three here. Give him two. But three? Yeah. So that was my only thing. You, I have no problem with, with suspending him, but the length and then the, their explanation was bullshit to me. What was the explanation? Exactly what you what you what you're saying that it's the it's the the accumulation the accumulation it? of his history. It's like, dude, it has to be within the year though. That's what I'm you, saying. You can't give him. Yeah, it has to be with like if I did it. Two or three times this year, then you can then, suspend me more. We talking about last yeah, season. You can't say we talking about eight seed. Well, every yeah, year that I do something, not nah, that's what I'm saying. They piled up a Rico case on him. That's corny. Yeah, that don't make sense. What, what do you think about that? They piled up a Rico case on him, Nicole. I'm standing up for my Lakers, man. I don't care. I think it's a visual thing too, though. I mean, so many stuff has gone in the NBA that they don't have laws and bylaws for. I think they're just flying. Flying by, they see it like they're flying at the seat of their pants, just like visually. Because you don't, it doesn't look good though when you push somebody who's not looking at you. I get this was different because it was kind of like a fight, but they are tired of Pat Bev and his antics. So I mean, I don't, I don't know how do you, I don't know what you do with that. Personally, I feel like it should have been one game. We know what this is. This is basketball. This is a contact sport. Right. No one actually got hurt. Uh, but I think it's more reactionary that, oh, it's on TV, and then, prime yeah. time game. And at the game. end of the day, too, I, I agree with you. I think that's what it was. Because if it wasn't on TV, I don't think they would have came down on him like that. A pause. Hey, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> but uh, um, what I will say is that LeBron, AD, Austin Reeves, although Austin Reeves, they got that type of money. Um, everybody should put a pool of money together. And they better give Pat Bev. If he get if he has to pay back two hundred and fifty, you make sure you put five hundred thousand in his hand because he stood up, took the yeah. bullets for the team. Yep. And y'all make sure y'all make that man whole, make him whole. You know what I'm saying? And that's so, how he stayed in the league. So yeah, that's and his role. That's his role. You know, he's not a scorer. He's not gonna wow you with stats. He's an enforcer. And an he's gonna tip. change the culture in regards to the the he's gonna put batteries in people's backs. That's what Pat Bev does. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So. He has a role. Everybody has a role. He understands his role. That's why I can't really hate on him right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I salute him for, for standing up for his teammate. Everybody needs to stand up for somebody in their life like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, if somebody tries to bully my son in school, I, I, I give him the same Pat Bev yeah. shove in the back. Hey. I don't care if they're five years old. I'll do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it to a five-year-old, Jimmy. I would. <laughs> I would. Okay? So, um, moving on. Moving on. You wanted to talk about Kyrie, obviously. I just wanted to know how he was doing. I didn't get to watch the games. I know LeBron was coming back. 
Um, I just want to know, you know, how the crowd were receiving him. Is he is he in his head? Is he actually scoring points? Did his game change? He's, you like, he's not playing too bad, but he but got, he has to knock the rust off. But yeah, pretty much it, yeah, it looks like he's gonna and, be and all plus right. Plus, he got the he, he got the, the 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 black the black Jews all over the place now. All over the place. They tried to get him with a Thanksgiving question. But he successfully I, dodged it. But listen, I gotta give I gotta give my man some credit. He has learned yeah. <laughs> how to be diplomatic. You know what I'm saying? So shouts to Kyrie Irving yeah. for, that, for actually learning how to deal with the press. Took a couple of lessons. But took, yeah, took yeah. a couple of lessons. You I know what I mean? I think we're here now. Had, had to go through some classes, but you know, he, <laughs> he's here now. <laughs> he's here now. Um, yeah. So, oh, yes. This is what I wanted to ask you. And see the smile on my face. Mm. Now, shameless plug. Um I've called the Los Angeles Clippers the basement the dwellers. Basement, yeah, the basement team. Back right? The basement I've team always now. said that they live in the basement with the space heaters and the dehumidifiers. This is where they belong, right? They don't belong on the top floor. They need permission to go upstairs. Um, and I mean that. Until they move out of, the, out, of, out of crypto arena, I will always say that about the Clippers. But what I—that's th- not where I'm going here. Mm. Where I'm going with the Clippers is, they are in the playoff chase right now. They have a very deep team. They have one of the deepest teams in the NBA. Well coached. Shouts to Ty Lue. He's one of the best coaches in yep. the league. Um, you know they still have Jerry Bus. Uh, excuse me, Jerry Jerry West as a consultant. Um, so they're doing great things over there. However, mm. Kawhi Leonard. And Paul George have dealt with injuries since they've gotten here. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard is dealing with the the ACL injury. And, you know, we were talking off camera saying that, you know, it's it's degenerative at this point. Yeah, that he's knee. he's having some bone on bone and there's some real issues that he's having. We may not see Kawhi Leonard get back. To where we're used to seeing him. Yeah. Um, Paul George has dealt with some injuries since he's been a Clipper. He's had shoulder surgery. He has the ankle now. He's had little bangs and bruises, you know, since yeah. he's been here. And the question I want to ask you: Should the Clippers pull the plug on this Kawhi Leonard and Paul George tandem? Yeah. I think should they it's press time. the reset button, or should they? You know, I think it's time. Um, they they were supposed to take over LA. I mean, it's not even to be shooting at them, but ever since they came out to say to take over at LA, they really haven't gone too deep into the playoffs. They yeah, had the I mean, the, run in the bubble. Yeah, they had they had the uh, the year that the Suns went to the finals. They went to the conference finals. They yeah. went to Game Seven, but that Kawhi Leonard had got hurt. Paul George took them to the to the conference finals. And they haven't been back since. And that's why I'd, I'd, I'd keep Paul yeah. because his injuries are kind of all over his body. He's often injured, but it's not a chronic injury. It's right. not the same thing. And um, I think he still has a veteran presence. We still need a star for the team. I'm not going to say some necessarily built around Paul George, but he's a good key piece. Yeah. And I feel like we could still get a haul or a really good pieces for Kawhi. So I think it's time to ship Kawhi out, even though he is the better player when healthy. But you can get more with him, and he's missed so many games that you. I'd rather take that gamble. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm with you. I, I think I think it is time for them to start exploring it. If they don't fully embrace the rebuild, I think they need to start feeling some calls. Yeah, and seeing what his market is. Um, but obviously, they're probably going to have to get his permission because I think he might have a no trade. He probably does, but I mean, with how things have gone since you've got to the team, hopefully. You you get it yourself. Like you're a professional. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. So hopefully he weighs that clause. They they can get him to a, a team that he feels he can still win and contend with and they can get off him on that contract. Cause I mean, I'm not gonna say what are you paying the guy for? Because when he is on the field or uh, when on the court he has lights out. But he's just missed too many games over the past Too many three games years. and and I think at this point you're not gonna get those performances out of him exactly consistently. For every twenty nine point game that he has you're going to have 15 games where he's not going to come close to that. And also, how much of a 
great two way player could he still be? Exactly. Because offensively, I can see his game. I think he'll still be an offensive right. force, but where he but made his name was yeah. defensively, and I, uh, how's he gonna ma- manage both? So yeah, I think it'd be. I don't. I don't. I don't want to just ship Kawhi off because I think he's like a premier player. And you just don't ship those guys off. But I think in the case of the Los Angeles Clippers, it might be the best thing for them. Listen, if 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 uh, Kawhi Leonard knows what's good for him, <laughs> he's not going that way. You know, he, he's uh, not going to the Lakers. He bro. calls Genie and says, "Listen, it, is it okay if I come upstairs? Is it okay if I? <laughs> yeah, can I use the elevator instead of the stairs? You know what I mean? Clippers are like Harry Potter under the stairs. Yeah, exactly. In the little facts, room. facts. They're not. They don't belong. Okay, you gotta make sure that the Lakers are not there for you to come upstairs. Okay." But uh, but yeah, I definitely agree. Though I think they really need to start looking at that, um, especially if they can't at least get fifty games yeah. or fifty five games each out of out of both of them. If you can't get that, it's like, what are you doing? What are you paying for at this point? Cause yeah, cause like we're paying for you to win a championship, but if you can't do that, at least fill the arena during the season, right? At least have the people have a show to come watch, and they know they can come see Quiet. Ain't no, ain't no George Clippers fans like, out there. The only Clippers fans I know is Billy Crystal. <laughs> that's the only person I know that's, that's a Clipper fan. Marcellus Wiley. Yeah, have you ever <laughs> seen? Oh, look, we live in New York, right? Have you ever seen anybody? No. And I'm talking about anybody. With a Clippers hat on, nah, never. I've never seen it in my I've seen life. A throwback jersey or two. Never I've hat. never seen never it in my life. Somebody wearing a Clippers hat. Not even in L.A. when I was there, I saw it. Nah, there ain't no Clippers fans yeah, out there. They're the basement team for real. I'm telling you, dehumidors and the, and the space heaters. <laughs> That's where they down in there. Next, uh, uh, I guess next topic we got um your your precious team. We're going baseball a little bit. I'm sure, Nicole is J- going to have uh, have her 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 talks about this. Aaron Judge, watch. Uh, Aaron Judge posted that he was, you know, Thanksgiving. You know, he was he was with family uh, out in California and may have some business mm. to attend to out there. Um, report has come out that he has he met with the the San Francisco um, Giants multiple times. Mm. They've had multiple conversations. Yeah, see, I so thought it was gonna happen. You as a Yankee fan, what are your thoughts? Do you think that Aaron Judge is playing the string out in regards to leverage? I think or so. do you actually think that he's going to leave? Well, both. I think he's playing the string out as far as leverage because New York did give him a low ball offer. So mm-hmm. I definitely feel like he's gonna try to push that up. But if another team comes with the right money and the right contract, I think he's out of here. He's 30 years old. New York does have trepidations about signing him to the f- over $400 million, which I guess they should. Why? Uh, well, is he going to do this again? This is the greatest walk year we've seen in sports. Mm-hmm. I don't care <laughs> if he can't do this again. If Aaron Judge never hits 62 home runs again, right? Yeah. Never. And he only gives me... Five or six 40, 40 home run seasons. Uh-huh. I'm yeah, good with that. Good. All right. You, you know what I'm saying? Like 60, 60 home 15? runs is an outlier. But for 415? Yeah. All right. well, well, there's no salary cap, so it's different. Yeah, for the four, four, a 40 home run hitter that can hit 270, 280. Obviously, he's going to strike out a lot. But if he's a power hitter in the middle of that lineup, yeah, you need that. That's what you pay for. Plus, on top of that, you're not only paying for the production, mm-hmm. you're paying for the leadership. They have a judge's chamber in the Bronx. <laughs> this is going to be the next captain of the Yankees. Yeah. That's not something that people take for granted. You understand what I'm saying? You had Jeter. Yeah. You had, um, what was the, the first baseman that, that had the, uh, the back injury? Um, what was his name, man? Um can't remember. Yankee fans help me out after this. Um, but um that that captain's that that captain seat doesn't get thrown around a lot with the Yankees. So if he becomes the captain, which I'm sure he will if he comes yeah, back, if he comes back they it's gotta. important for them to be able to give him what he wants. That they, they ha- the Yankees have no leverage at this point. Zero. 
So for Hal and them, they just need to put the check and say, yeah, sorry. Sorry that we lowballed you. Go write in something and, and please don't make it hurt too much. Yeah, That's it. Definitely. I mean, you're, you're a little closer to the situation than me. I For me, it's the age and versus the money yeah. versus are we going to recoup that? But honestly, after the year that he had, I feel like he's earned it. Because think about it. If they, if they get if they sign him for a nine, eight, nine, ten-year contract, right? And they get one World Series out of it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. You know what I'm saying? That's what they got out of A-Rod. They got one fabulous run in 2009, right? Mm. When he was on fire, they went through the playoffs. He had a great playoffs, and they won a World Series. Yeah. So that whole $275 million contract, it was worth it. You know what I mean? So that that's how I'm looking at it, is that the Yankees have always been a team that spent, yep. and they've... They've done a good job of keeping their players, their lifelong players there. Happy there. You can't go down this road yeah. where yeah. you allow him to walk. After 62. Because be the numbers, I think I, I, I was reading something today. Aaron Judge's numbers in the second half of the season was, I think he hit like three, 330, 340. Mm. His on-base percentage was, like, in the fives. His slugging percentage was in the sevens. Right? He And you know what the team's batting average was in the second half? Wow. It was, like, 225. Their on-base was lower than 30%, right? And their slugging was, like, 360. That's so nice. think about that. That's the nice. team struggled. He literally them, yeah. carried them through the second half of the season. Pay that man. Yeah. Pay him whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> and if he wants a date with your daughter, <laughs> you let him go on a date with your daughter too. Because he you you gonna make he gonna make sure that she gets home safe because he's that type of person. You know what I'm saying? Give him what he wants. Don't don't try to lowball that man because guess what? If they do, Cohen will give him the Yeah. Advice. And the Giants will too. Because the Giants, the Giants said they already came out and said there's not a check they won't write to go get Aaron Judge. So if you got a team that's 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 dead serious on getting a guy like that, you're gonna have to overpay for him if yeah, you're the Yankees. Yeah. And that's just the way it is. So yeah. Um coming up after the break, the greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. <laughs> Dummy, yeah. Welcome back, y'all. So now we are at my favorite segment of the show. The greatest segment on the planet, Dummy of the Week. Dummy, yeah. I ask every week, go around the room. Who do y'all think is the Dummy of the Week? Jimmy, the super intern, who you got? I ain't gonna lie to you, Jimmy. Listen, Elon Musk is the smartest dummy I've ever seen. Yeah. He really is. Like... You gonna buy something for forty four billion, and in in a in a week or two it's gonna be worth six dollars. <laughs> wow, wow. It's gonna be worth six dollars. Come on, man, that's bad. Yeah. Nicole, who you got? Go with, uh, FIFA. Oh, yeah, FIFA. FIFA's pretty bad too. Dirty. Uh. Dirty. Dirty like a hooker in church. Dirty, right? Just dirty. They and they've been bad for a while. They've been bad for a while. Um, you know, I've always said that besides, you know, if it, if it wasn't for FIFA, international soccer, baseball would be the dirtiest sport mm-hmm. on the face of the planet. But baseball is a distant second to all the crime and scandal that, that FIFA goes through. Yeah, because baseball's on the field. Facts. <laughs> Facts. All the nonsense when FIFA comes off the field. And they be paying off judges. They People be getting murdered. It's, it's bad. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. There's a... It's a, it's a rabbit hole of nonsense. Um, who you got six? Uh, not sports related. I gotta go with Ye. Uh, he makes this big apology to the Jewish and Black community, and then he's popping up with like neo Nazis and I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this guy. I don't know what's going on with him. He's making presidential bids while telling people he's never read a book. Like he's just all over the. <laughs> 
it's just oh, I know it's a sports show, but just for my two cents, I gotta give him one time, one time for the one time. Gotta hit the button on Kanye West. Dummy, yeah. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's a strong one. That you, 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 you have me swaying right now. I ain't gonna hold you. I, I'm, I, I, I want to go in. <laughs> Oh yeah, but I I feel I go in too much on him. Yeah, I'm I tired. know, I know. But I'm they, tired, I know. but I feel you. Yeah. Like it, it instead of it getting better in regards to like him laying low, it's like the worse. fire, it's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. You know, so it, that's a good one. Everybody, round of applause, y'all y'all have some good ones. But I I got I got a good one. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm. This one this one made me laugh. So much that I had to replay the video maybe nine times. What? I gotta say. I'm I'm lit I'm literally in tears. May I have the drum roll, please? And the winner for Dummy of the Week. Herschel Walker! Oh my god. Herschel Walker is my dummy of the week. Dummy, yeah. Now I don't know if any of you have seen this video, but you need to watch it. Mm. Type in Herschel Walker talks about movies. Yeah. Pre-CTE Herschel. Herschel Walker <laughs> was on his campaign. Now, if people don't know if you've been living on a rock, Herschel Walker is running for senator in the state of Georgia. He's going against uh, Raphael Reverend Warnock. Raphael Warnock, who is the incumbent right now. And... Um, the way Georgia works is that you need to have 50% of the vote in the election. If you don't, it goes to a runoff where somebody has to win, right? Mm -hmm. So this is where they're at now. No candidate got over 50%, so now they're, they're at the runoff. He had a rally where he's talking about a vampire movie. So he said, yeah, I watched the vampire movie and... Uh, you know, oh, we, yeah. the, the vampire, he go ahead, he get bitten. So he's talking about all this nonsense. And he flips it and talks about how you have to have faith. <laughs> that was one of the weirdest flips. I'm like, okay, Herschel, bring it home, baby. Bring it home. <laughs> and he flipped into I'm, that. And I yo, was just listen, like, oh, the man. man went on a tirade for like five minutes talking about this movie. And then with vampires, you know, you got to get the garlic on your neck and you the garlic away and you got to get the spiky right. thing in your head. I'm like, oh, You know, vampire, they cool bro. people, man. I, listen, I don't like to bang on my own people. I don't. But Herschel Walker may be the stupidest person walking the planet. I'm not kidding. Like, he's that dumb. He's one of those people that did you, I don't even want to say it. Did you see the video when he was younger, when he was talking and interviewing? No. Like he's clear CTE. Like yeah. he, you can hear him. He wasn't slurring. Great vocabulary. Yeah. Clearly has CTE. Now. Okay, okay. It, 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 so something happened to him. Yeah. Something happened to oh, him. Oh, yeah. They, they, his bell got rung a couple of times. Something happens to that man because y'all, I'm telling you, you have to see it. It's bad. Yeah. It's the, it's one of the worst video it's it's like watching a car crash but you can't look away nine times oh that shit is crazy bro <laughs> nine times i watched it in a row nine because i couldn't believe it yeah i couldn't yeah. i thought it was a joke yeah i thought it was a joke i was like just bring it home Herschel. what are you trying to say here and yo even the people that were in the crowd was just like yeah you lost them bro where are we going with this then he said yeah you gotta have faith you gotta believe in God. what <laughs> You talk about vampires. Vampires don't believe in God. The devil. How you going to talk about vampires? What do you say? And talk about God. You got to stab the doing? vampire, but the thing is the vampire survived. You know why? Because he didn't have faith. <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> oh, man. You know what? You know what? I changed my mind. I changed my mind. I'm voting for Herschel Walker. I don't care. I need more entertainment out of Herschel Walker. You want Walker. sound bites from him? Yo, dude. What has gone on with our, with our country? What is going on with politics? <laughs> yeah, what's doing? It's like reality TV. Sometimes it's worse. I feel like no, am I the it only ain't reality, one who sees this? It ain't reality TV, fam. It is wrestling. That's what it is. It has turned into WWE wrestling. A character like Herschel Walker would never survive. Never. If this was like 20, 30 years ago. Never. 
We got one. We got rid of one guy for being too excited. Facts. And we're gonna go to Idaho. Then we're gonna Delaware. <laughs> yeah. We can, he he was out of there. The next day, and these are the people we led into politics now. Like this is wild, son. Oh man. So Herschel Walker, I'm just gonna say this in the camera. You ain't gonna win, bro. You're not even close. It's gonna be a landslide victory for for Reverend Raphael Warnock. You're gonna be a loser. You're going to go right back to Texas because you don't even live in Georgia. That's the funny part. You're running for senator in Georgia. You don't live in Georgia. You live in Texas, right? But you're a winner for Dummy of the Week. That's all for this show. Six, I appreciate you coming through, man. Of course, bro. Um, you know, this was a fun show. We talked about a lot of things, a lot of serious topics. Yeah. You know? Man, we got to do it every once in a while. Of course, man. Of course, of course. You know, you you, you got you to... Gotta, you got to uh, touch on the the serious stuff and speak the facts. You know what I mean? Um, also, I definitely want to say that, again, we got to do better as a country. We have to do better in regards to this whole cancel culture nonsense. I don't call it cancel culture. I call it cancer culture, um, where if we continue to go down this road, it's just going to spread Yep. It's going to get worse. It's going to go to our children. And we don't want that type of disease keep to keep spreading. We need to be able to get that out, biopsy it, get it out of there, and fix it. So, um, you know, I don't know what we need to do to get, get to that point. But I think it starts with people need to put these down more. You yeah. know, take more time to just kind of decompress and enjoy life. Go to a restaurant. And not take a fucking picture of a of your food. Go to a club or go on vacation and not take a billion pictures and just enjoy being on vacation. If you're with your friends, don't take a billion pictures yeah. while you're with your friends. Enjoy just being with your friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, how can you enjoy life if you're always taking pictures? Through the camera lens. I stopped with the concerts. I learned that a long time ago. Right. You go on the concerts, the whole thing. I'm time. I'm holding right. up the phone. You're not. You're, you're missing I'm, everything. I'm missing everything. So. so that's that's my PSA for this week. <laughs> Jimmy the super intern. I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Nicole and the ones and twos, the silent assassin. I call her the the knee breaker. That's what I call her. Um, you know, I'm sure she collected a lot of a lot of debt over the over the <laughs> week. You know, I saw a new I saw a new silver you know yeah, gold chain that she had on. Okay. Last week, she was all actually right, cool. Yeah. She she collected some some money. You know? <laughs> Take the picks got, this week. She's definitely gonna be giving away money. So. Facts, facts. Um, until next week, stay safe, stay cool, peace. My son is the champ. So get over it. <laughs>